What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Code Peterson tutorial. We're doing some more GB Studios. I've been doing a lot of GB Studio lately and just having a lot of fun playing around with these different elements. The idea for this demonstration I want to show you today came from Zero Kimchi who posted on the comments a great idea. Is there a way where you can have like an animated intro or you know i don't want to say cinematics with gb studio but if you can make something that's a little more cinematic or some kind of a engaging storytelling intro and maybe something you could use throughout your game and then also um posted is there a way where we can have some scrolling credits so trying to put those things into one demonstration on here and i played around with this because i'd never i'd never tried it before so this is Kind of what I was able to come up with to hopefully share some ideas for you all out there on to do this. So to show you what it looks like first, push play here. And you can see we're scrolling down through this moon and star sky. And I'm not pressing anything on my keyboard. It just automatically did that. And then here's my little title screen that says press start. So I'm going to press start and then I'm not pressing anything and my ghost comes over here and why don't monsters eat ghosts? I'm going to press the button to advance the dialogue so you can choose in here if you want it to advance as soon as the text is done. But I kind of like giving the reader or the game player a chance to read through the dialogue before advancing. So I'm going to advance they taste like sheet little dad joke for you there and i know all my demonstrations lately have been kind of ghost and pumpkin related but it is it is the season for that so bear with me until we get on to something else so i'll advance the text again and the ghost moves off the screen and then here we have our rolling credits and obviously when you get down you can still see this text up here, you know, I didn't measure it out as I should have to just show this on here. And then I made it to where it's a loop to where when it's done, when you press start, then it takes you to the back. So I think even though I use this as an example of how to start a game and maybe the opening scene of a game and then your final credits, but these are things you could put in in between each of your levels or whenever you want to do that, you know. Uh, and here's how I did it. So for scene one, basically, I'll show you my little level map here, which you saw in there. But I ma I just made this entitled, and so um, I made my little tiles, and then I went into that program and made this. It's the width of the Game Boy screen, and you can find all those measurements and everything in my other tutorials, or if you go to GB Studios website. And down at the bottom, you can see we have just some kind of grass on here, and then we have our title. So once I was done creating the background in tile, then I opened it up in Photoshop, but you could use any image editor. And then I typed in the name of this game, just a generic name here, Spooky Adventure, and then press start. And then I saved it as a PNG so that I could bring it into my game. Um, for the actual level, I made the same thing. And I actually made this level first, and then I imported this into the bottom of the spooky adventure uh, map and tiled on there. So that's, I wanted those to match up perfectly. So it showed it here. And when I press start, then we were kind of in that same spot. And then for the final credits. Same thing, I just made a a level and tiled, but I just filled it with that real dark bluish greenish color that you get from GB Studio. And then I put in my text in here, you know, just to show you what it would look like. And those were the images. The other sprites I, I've used in my other tutorials uh, throughout these past few demonstrations. Uh, once I had those created, then obviously I went up to images and I brought in 
this final credits, the level one and the scroll scene. I put all those in here and I just brought them in as regular images like I would use for any background or for any level. And then I added a scene and I selected my background over here and I chose chose this first scene for for here and then for this one I brought in another scene then I brought in my third scene so that was all for that now if I go to the first one here I made this be a shoot 'em up type and the reason why I chose that is because I wanted this to auto scroll down and so when you do that you can you can select like what direction you want that to scroll. In this case, I wanted it to scroll down because it's a vertical shot, but I could have just as easily had this be a, a horizontal level with the title at the end and you're like kind of scrolling there. I could have done it that way, but this is just kind of how I made it for, the, for this demonstration. And then on here, I went on here and I hid the player for step one. Um, once I was done with that, then the only other thing really that I added on here was a going down here to add an event. And I went to attach script to start or attach script to button. And then I selected start. And what happens? Well, on press, we're just changing a scene. So I, I selected scene two. And that is what allowed us to scroll down at the beginning of this and it goes down. Now, if, if I play this again, just like any other game, if I don't wanna watch that every time, I can just press return and go to the next scene. So it's it's kind of like if you don't wanna watch the opening parts of any game, uh, you, can, you can do that. And I also, you know, if you wanted to go a step further, you could do some animated tile replacements. Like I've used, stars in the sky before and, and animated them and i have that in a in a tile replacement tutorial for animated backgrounds that you can check out uh, so you can you know make it much more than this this was just to show you you know kind of an opening uh view in there now for scene two this one has a little bit a little bit more going on to it uh, so if what I I just use top down 2D, but you could you could use platform or or anything else. And sometimes, you know, when you go and select this, there is an option on there for logo. But when I tried this with logo with the with the little display dialogues, it behaved real strangely so I had to just make it be a, a regular scene on there so I brought in an actor which is this ghost and I brought in another actor which is this pumpkin and then on in it of scene two I just moved my actor to this location on here so I added an event and move actor to position and I actually waited for a second just to so it didn't start moving right away so there is a wait for a second on there and then you are just kind of scripting your scene kind of like if you were writing a script where you wanted people to act or or to do whatever um I just kind of listed these things on here one at a time that I wanted to have happen on there so the ghost moves over to the pumpkin and then after that, I have a display dialogue on there. And I selected on here the text. Now, if I wanted to, I could have added an avatar and had the ghost say one thing and then have the pumpkin say another. I just made it like this to make it a little quicker. And then for the layout, I put the position at the top so that the display dialogue would be up here and it wouldn't cover our characters and scene down here thought that was important and on behavior here you can have text open speed you can change that and you can change the same when the text closes but then also you can say close when 
And then on here we have um, when text finished or if you never want it to text or if you, if you never want it to end. And then down here, I do have when the A button is pressed, but you can choose any if you want, which is a new feature on here. And I absolutely love that because just for pause features and things like that, it, it'll be a lot better than it was. Uh, so once you get through those, then I have the actor moving back to the beginning spot like it's moving off the screen. And then down there, I have change scene to scene three. So once he moves over there, then it automatically switches to the next scene. And then this one over here is basically the same thing. Um, when I was putting this together, I was like, oh, if I was going to do scrolling text, I should have done this one be a scene one be a horizontal scroll just to switch it up a little bit. But it all works the same way. And on here, I just did the same thing. I did a shoot 'em up so that it automatically scrolls through these these images on here. Now, because I made this in edited it in Photoshop, it's going to be a little bit bigger file size with some of these. So that's that's one drawback of this scrolling with the text on there like that. Uh, but I think, you know, I don't think it'll be enough to really change. Uh, another thing you could do is in this same kind of context here, you could theoretically then just make your scene, you can make multiple scenes in any kind of image editor. And then like, you could almost have it be kind of like a slideshow. So when you press return, go to the next, or when you press start, go to the next scene. When you press start, go to the next scene. And instead of it being animated, you know, you could even have almost like kind of like comic panels and do that through your scene too. Kind of like the, I think like the Spider-Man games for Super Nintendo that had kind of those opening little scenes in there that were kind of like comic pictures. And that is how we did it. So again, once it was all done, we get something like this. And, you know, you can even kind of mix and match these different things that I showed to do that. But at least it kind of gives you something to where you're not just saying, okay, my game is starting right now. I and we're right into it, you can have some options in there to where you're kind of like watching a little story before you get to your actual game and then your credits on there. So hopefully that helps out with that with that comment and uh, gives you some ideas to play around with. Let me know in the, in the comments if you like this or if you want me to go into any of these elements further or try some things out or let me know if you make something a million times awesomer because... I'm sure you all have because the talent of everyone else on here making games and, and sharing their results is is pretty phenomenal. So uh, as always, I really, really appreciate it that you all take the time to watch this video. Like and subscribe if you like what you see and uh, share anything in the comments. And hopefully we'll catch you on another video down the road.